Thank you, Roland. Thank you very nice for, for the nice introduction and thank you all for, for coming this morning. Uh, it is a great pleasure to thank Roland and Gil and Sarah and Lisa and everybody else uh, who was responsible for this uh, wonderful, well-planned, uh, really great uh, conference. It, uh, it, it will be remembered, I'm sure, for, for years. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. And, uh, and what I would like to do uh, now is to take you into a journey. Um, so we are in movement ecology and we are traveling in space and also in the world of ideas. And, uh, and what I would like uh, to do uh, today is to, in the first part of my talk, I will uh, uh, share with you uh, some of the developments of, of the ideas and, and, and the background and uh, the motivation. Uh, 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 quite personal for for this uh, for this uh, initiative, and uh, and in the second uh, part, I would like to uh, go to this to this uh, future direction uh, part and and add to the uh, almost uh, or I would say complete <laughs> a list of of Martin Vikelsky yesterday and add some some uh, some few more points on on uh, where this field. Uh, uh, could uh, go. So um, among these logos that you see here, my lab, the uh, Minerva Center for Movement Ecology, uh, this is uh, the logo of this new journal called uh, Movement Ecology that uh, is published by uh, BMC. It's uh, open access. Uh, uh, a journal that is dedicated to the study of the movement of the whole organisms with these uh, 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 subjects that, uh, that covers uh, hopefully everything about uh, uh, the movement of, of organisms from ecological, evolutionary, uh, genetic, zoological, botanical, and so on perspectives. Uh, so uh, we uh, have a, um, a large editorial board uh, seven members of our editorial boards are here. Frederick, Gill, Bill, John is, has arrived already. Or maybe he will come soon. Roland, uh, Kasper, and Martin. And uh, we are soon uh, uh, going to celebrate one year. And we have uh, already uh, 47 submissions, 23 papers published or accepted. Uh, 14, unfortunately, rejected, about 40%. Uh, this is the number of visitors to the, to the website. And uh, time to first decision is about one month. It can be better and it will be better, but it's already quite good for, uh, for this kind of journals. And uh, most uh, uh, authors say they will submit again. And that's, and that's of course, um, not a uh, uh, um, responsibility of, of the editors only, it is responsibility for this community uh, to, um, to promote this forum, to uh, um, give way to, the, uh, to this, uh, to uh, uh, find a good forum, uh, high-sided, uh, 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 and ecology letters like a uh, um, uh, journal for, for this field. So it is your responsibility if you want highly cited journal. So do send your, your best papers. And, uh, and how many of you have already published or, or submitted a paper for, for this journal? So I, I counted 18 among the participants of, of this, of this uh, journal. So these people are making good decisions <laughs> and they should be followed. Okay. So uh, I would like especially, uh, please take a look at, at, at these 23 uh, papers. Uh, 22 of them are, are online. Uh, and you will see uh, really a great, a great uh, um, assembly of, of papers. I would like to mention in particular this wonderful paper by, by Somi, uh, Gil, Rolf, Sarah, Roland, uh, David Douglas, uh, Sebastian, Jury, David Vanders, and Martin. 
And this is our uh, highly as uh, access uh, uh, paper, and it's already quite well cited. And uh, so uh, I believe uh, Gil uh, talked about that uh, uh, yesterday. And this is a very important uh, contribution that, uh, that uh, we need to use and elaborate and improve. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. So movement. Movement is about the change in the spatial position. Uh, over time, we focus on the entire uh, organism. It is a characteristic, very basic characteristic of life. And uh, every species is moving in one stage or another. It's critical for survival and for functionality. And, uh, and it is a main driver in evolution. And it is uh, uh, critical importance for dynamics of uh, ecological systems, uh, not only basic ecology and evolution and animal behavior and genetics and so on are, are, um, have, uh, are influenced by movement, but also some of the major concern we have today, including the effect of, of, uh, of climate changes uh, and the effect of fragmentation. Here we are worried that movement will be insufficient to uh, cope with these uh, problems. On the other end, we have problems with excessive movements by pests and, and diseases and invasive species. And these are four of the most important global concerns, environmental glo global concerns that we face today. And movement is the key in, in, in each one of them. So we have strong motivation to study uh, movement, and we do so. These are just a few examples of the, of the very large literature on, on movement. 26,000 papers published on movement in this 10 years period. And you see that the absolute number and also the, the proportion of papers in 500 journals in ecology, evolutionary biology, genetics, zoology, botany, and so on, 10%. Uh, uh, that was almost 10 years ago of, of, this, of, of the papers published in these journals how related uh, to movement. So it is time to uh, consider in general the common reason for moving with any movement, whatever. This is a call for, for integrating movement research made by this guy, Aristotle, uh, 2300 years ago. It's not so recent and it has not been followed. Movement research is not still, has no general theory. Uh, uh, you know that Aristotle was, was um, uh, talking about basic principles in, and that's a major contribution. And here he was calling for, for uh, identifying uh, the basic principles of movements, but uh, movement research like almost any other field of science are going into specialized uh, field and we educate our students to focus on the, on the system, to understand the system very well. And this is, of course, uh, a very good way to do science, but it has a, a price and the price is that we are losing the general uh, picture. And, uh, and talking about general picture, that's a general theory we all know of and that's the, and we all uh, appreciate the importance of, of uh, theory of natural selection. Darwin, uh, uh, two chapters of the origin are, are devoted to movement, to long distance dispersal. And his first lecture was about movement. His last paper was about movement. And at the time that Darwin uh, uh, worked, one of his friends was Robert Brown, who noticed the movement of pollen in his microscope and uh, he wrote this brief account of microscopical observation made in the month of June, July, and August. <laughs> you see the title. It's very, very, he has a, a capacity for small details, <laughs> as, uh, as Darwin actually noted in his autobiography that uh, the Trover Bound is too much into details. So he was able to observe particles condensed in the, uh, uh, in the pollen of plants and on the general existence of active molecules in organic and inorganic bodies. 
This, is, this uh, uh, was neglected for a while, but then uh, a few people uh, captured this, as mentioned by Oz uh, yesterday. One of them was this guy. And in 1905, he submitted his, uh, his thesis with uh, four papers that changed the world. Uh, the most cited one is the one on Brown in motion. So uh, in taking this observation, uh, Einstein was motivated to prove that atoms and molecules exist, and in doing so, he established the random walk uh, and Brownian uh, motion uh, paradigm that is a very fundamental theory that we all use today. So uh, we, we stand on the, on the shoulder of giants in, in, in uh, movement ecology, and we uh, address some of the most important uh, uh, questions in science. And this is a special feature of uh, science published in 2005, uh, uh, emphasizing 125 big questions. One of them was the uh, questions of how long distance uh, migrants navigate. Each one of us has its own big questions. And I would ask what determines the repertoire of movement modes used by uh, individuals, population of species, what drive the uh, evolution of different movement phenomena, and how the basic components of movement differ among major taxonomic groups. So uh, it is a big opportunity now to address these uh, questions and, and to get this uh, desired unification. Uh, we have new technologies, and uh, uh, we can track now uh, all sorts of critters in, in, in high detail and long durations. We have new data analysis uh, tools, and this conference is, is just great in, in, in introducing and presenting and teaching us uh, all these uh, excellent tools. And, uh, and uh, we also have some uh, 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 proposal for unifying frameworks or for frameworks that can facilitate the, the development of a general theory. And uh, I'll take these uh, uh, three components and I would like to put them in this wonderful short paper written uh, a year ago or a bit more by Freeman Dyson from Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton. So he's asking, is science mostly driven by ideas or by tools? He says, we are standing now, as we stood in the 50s, between a Cohenian dream of sudden illumination and a Galicianian reality of laborious exploring. So after he accounts for what happens in physics, he say, Kuhn and Galison are running neck and neck in the race for glory. We are lucky to live in a time when both are going uh, strong. So in this uh, perception, these are the tools that we now develop, and these are the ideas. And, uh, and I do think they're running more or less together. I would say that the tools are now ahead of the ideas. And I will summarize in the last slide that this is not necessarily bad. And I will explain uh, uh, why. So uh, to the tools, I will not elaborate much on that, but we all know and we all astonish every time, like in Martin's lecture, every time you hear Martin, you hear <laughs> the, this new big uh, project that are, that are coming out and, uh, and, uh, and it, it, it is running very, very f fast. And um, from radio telemetry, we have now uh, our ability to uh, follow very small creatures and GPS devices that revolutionize the world, geolocators, and, and so on. Uh, this is the perspective of my group. Uh, this is the number of data points, uh, location data points, that we have in the end of each project. Uh, these are uh, PhD of Neil Sapir is with us on bee eaters and uh, master's work of Orr Spiegel is also here on Tristan Gracos and the order of a few hundred or a little bit more than 1,000 data points in the end of the project. Very hard work, working days and nights, uh, many people, and, and ending with this number of, of data points, not so high quality. Uh, today, uh, we, are, we are talking about millions or even tens of millions of, of, uh, of uh, data points per project. And this jump in four orders of magnitudes within uh, 10 years, it's really, it's already maybe five as we speak today. 
Chai was in, in, his, in Germany and downloaded in, within a few days a few millions of data points from, from the stores that came out from, from uh, Africa. So um, this is really, I think, reflecting what, what the field is experiencing. And we are facing the benefits of big data and also the problems of big data that is not mentioned much in, in, this, in this meeting, but it is a big issue that we need to, uh, uh, to address. This is a, a, a Griffin uh, Vultures uh, uh, study by Orr, by Roy RL, and by uh, Alejandro. It has a wind tag. Uh, as you can see here, within the wind tag, we have a RFID that uh, registered the uh, 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 presence in feeding station and so on. Uh, the GPS tag that provides the location. We have also uh, 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 acceleration uh, uh, measurements uh, that from which we can tell behavior and uh, energy expenditure. We collect feeders, blood to uh, uh, relate sex, uh, relatedness, source, and stress, and so on. And uh, here are just some of the two examples of the outcome of, of, of this, this kind of data. These are one hertz data. Uh, these are Egyptian uh, food bats uh, flying from the cave to uh, a specific tree. And these are uh, uh, three vultures that are uh, uh, foraging here in the Negev desert, uh, climbing a thermal and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, uh, gliding and, and moving on. Meanwhile, our bat is flying in, a, in a, a very straight line, very far from its cave, and ignoring all these orchards full of fruits, uh, stopping uh, about uh, uh, 20 minutes here and here and here, and then using this road uh, between these this, this, uh, fields as, as a guideline and flying very short, very low, uh, and, and to this specific tree 25 kilometers from the, from the cave, uh, in the beginning of this project, we were lost. Uh, uh, Asaf who did this work, was not able to find the, the bats. Uh, we, we say there are maybe one kilometer, two kilometers, five kilometers from the, from the cave. And, and uh, most of them, all of them, are going quite far to a specific tree, night after night, up to four, four uh, uh, um, uh, uh, month. And uh, this was a discovery, and we feel that, that now with the new technology, every project is discovering something new, and, and really seriously new, not, not in, the, in the fine details. And, and for me, this is a good sign that, that, uh, that uh, uh, we, need, we need this, this, this uh, advanced uh, tools. So uh, I'm moving to this uh, uh, ideas uh, section. Uh, so, um, a movement ecology was, was uh, uh, um, a project that, uh, that uh, we uh, have in the uh, Institute for Advanced Studies in Jerusalem. And just before we launched this, uh, this international project, uh, uh, it was um, told to, uh, um, uh, uh, to the science e editors and they, they, they uh, published this uh, news uh, article that's saying that a few researchers say it's time for some synthesis. Uh, after this, uh, this project, it was a one-year project, and uh, we published this special feature in PNAS on, on uh, introducing the general framework and, and about 10 examples uh, from plants and animals. And uh, I think the next uh, important step is, is a year ago uh, when we launched this, uh, this journal. So movement ecology is uh, actually a proposal. It's not the theory itself, and it's not the only proposal possible. It's one proposal how to unify the study of organisms of all kinds. We want to stimulate the development and sharing of research tools. We want to promote the understanding of the causes, consequences, patterns, and mechanism of movements, and to set the stage for the development of a unifying uh, uh, theory. So how we do that? Uh, first, we focus on an individuals, although many movement processes are, are population-level processes, traditionally, like dispersal and so on. Uh, movement is, 
is uh, executed by individuals and it is important to focus on individuals and then scale up to population and even communities and that's a challenge but but we thought it's it's better to start with uh, individuals and then consider scale and as Martin emphasized a lifetime track so if this is the lifetime track from birth to death and we look at, at a small segment we can identify within these segments some phases functional phases and if we look at even in more high detail, we can see the movement uh, uh, steps. So this is the lifetime track of princes, as Martin mentioned, and the steps of, of uh, and that's like in genetics, the metaphor is the, the ability to sequence the entire genome and to identify the basic nucle nucleotides that made for this long sequence. And the question is, what are the genes of, of movement? What are the functional type, functional segments that, that uh, we call the movement phase? And this is, in general, called segmentation, the, the, the challenge of, of, of finding out the functional elements of, of the movement uh, uh, path. And uh, the third uh, principle was to look for these basic principles, like Aristotle was doing, imagine all these movement phenomena are different colors, so we look for the three or four basic colors that with different combination make for this uh, large uh, variety. So here is our proposal for the four basic components of movement ecology, uh, the internal state, the physiological state, the mental state, whatever in the individuals from which the motivation to move is derived. I'm hungry, I'm going to look for food, I'm afraid I'm going to look for shelter and, and, and so on. Then you need to execute the movement. You need machinery to, to, to move. And these are, these are the motion mechanisms. Uh, you make decision where and when you want to go. And these are the navigation mechanism. And all of these are properties of the focal single individuals of, of, of that we focus on and then everything else, all the external factors, other individuals, other species, the physical structure of the environment and so on are in, in, in one this in a box. And to put the pieces uh, of this puzzle together, here is the focal individual and, uh, and uh, it, it must have some, some motivation, even undefined, but, but something uh, internal that, that is related uh, uh, to the movement, then it needs some machinery to execute the movement and this generate the movement path. And uh, this is the shortest possible track and, and in many organisms they have also uh, the ability to uh, decide when and where to move and, and the external factors affecting each of these components. Uh, there are feedbacks from the movement uh, uh, path to the internal state and the external uh, factors. And, uh, and there's uh, uh, an external dynamics not related to movement of, of course, all the, the external world and of the internal state uh, as well. So we took this framework and we took in random 1,000 papers out of these 26,000 papers and were able with no problem to specify each of these components in all these 1,000 uh, 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 examples even though this framework was published after these, these uh, 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 papers were published. And this is probably because this simple framework is so basic that, that this is what we had in mind when we thought about, about movement. And uh, one thing that, uh, and of course you can, this is a conceptual framework, you can put it in mathematical uh, terms, all this, uh, all this component here is the next step is a function of of the, uh, the current step and all these uh, uh, factors plus, plus noise. And um, what we uh, immediately realized once we had this, uh, so I, we, people who were there uh, were, uh, were mentioned here, and also uh, um, Roger, where's Roger? Roger Powell, Roger is here? Well, Roger Powell was, <laughs> Is, is around here and he was very instrumental in setting us uh, these ideas and uh, and uh, once they uh, they 
uh, we, we had this, we realized that actually this framework maps the existing paradigms of studying, studying movement. For example, there's a whole field uh, uh, derived from physics that look only on the movement path. It call, we call it random paradigms. They think that with uh, very clever uh, 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 distribution feed, they can tell everything about, about the movement. They, they don't know much about the, the biology and all these constraints and, and motivations, but they want to understand everything from the movement path. And another uh, paradigm is centered around the motion capacity, but biomechanics of, of seeds on, on air and, and, and horses and so on. Uh, cognitive sciences uh, focus on this, these uh, questions and how uh, 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 movement is, uh, is how decision I make, how movement is perceived and uh, optimal uh, theories of dispersal, migration and, uh, and foraging are all about movement but they concentrate on, on the interplay between the external factors and the internal uh, factors and the vast majority of the study do not consider the movement itself. So movement ecology is not new. Is, uh, the, what is new in movement ecology is the integration of all of these existing paradigms and, and, and uh, we say this is uh, our ideal way how to look at, at the movement of a certain uh, system do not study only the, the movement path or only the navigation capacity, the motion capacity, or, or ask optimal questions, but try to encompass all these components. And if you do not do that, that's fine, but, be, but you should be aware that, that you uh, put aside for a while the uh, important components of the, of the movement in the system. So uh, um, just to show you the, 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 the evolutionary context of this, uh, this is a, a, a conference about uh, movement of animals, but I think the, the evolutionary uh, perspective of this is, is best shown when we look at, at uh, sea dispersal. So uh, in this system, the uh, focal individual is the seed and the uh, uh, important external driver is the wind. And you can uh, easily identify what's the motion capacity is all this adaptation to facilitate dispersal by wind. And imagine you can at least model the, the trajectories of, of uh, sea dispersed by wind. But what are those two uh, components here? What is the internal state of a seed? And what is the navigation capacity of a seed? And, uh, and it is much easier to answer this question when you put this, this questions under evolutionary perspective, uh, under multi-generational uh, perspective. So the internal state is the selection to find establishment opportunities in time and space. And it is uh, a, a selection, it, it is um, a, a selection that operates over a generation and, and, and led to the development of these, of these uh, 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 adaptations. And the navigation capacity is the selection for traits that determine the timing of seed release in relation to those uh, establishment opportunities. Seeds are not released, most of them are not released at random, but in certain season, in certain conditions, and, and, and so on. So, so selection acts to, uh, in a way that, that, uh, that navigate uh, the seeds at least in time and maybe also in, in space. So uh, I'm moving uh, to this uh, uh, question that uh, um, uh, um, about uh, uh, why, how, when, and where are we going? And again, Martin already uh, uh, put a list uh, that I share. I told Martin that uh, I came up with uh, my own list and then I read his abstract and it's almost identical. Uh, and, and we have been brainstorming about this, this uh, question for, for years, so, uh, so I will not uh, um, re uh, repeat the, the very nice emphasis that Martin gave. And, uh, and just I would say we must always consider fitness when we talk about uh, movement. Uh, we need to make it happen in the field, in real life systems. Uh, we al always need to push technology to, it, to the limits and, and, and having lifetime talks is, is very important. So what else? Uh, 
Uh, I would like to uh, emphasize regarding the why questions that, uh, that we need to reassess the existing theory. We have an opportunity now with these wonderful tools to do that, and we need to develop new theory. Uh, at, at the, uh, regarding the question how, the methods, how to do it, uh, I would emphasize uh, the, the importance of developing system for uh, regional scale uh, uh, tracking of about uh, uh, 10 kilometers. And big data, I've already emphasized, I will say just that, and I will, uh, uh, because um, uh, this really needs a serious uh, 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 focus on, on what are we going to do with uh, uh, so much data and so variable data and so on. And then I will go to uh, two topics that, uh, that uh, um, uh, the direction for f future research that I think are very worthy. Uh, uh, studying these topics combines the, the, the best benefits in my perspective from the, from the uh, new technologies and also uh, this field are, are stuck for, for many years and, and with no significant uh, progress and, and, and I think that, uh, uh, well, maybe I'm, I'm saying too much, but I think it's, it's an opportunity to, to really boost up these this, uh, uh, fields with, uh, with the new uh, um, uh, technology that, uh, that and, and tools that we now have. So uh, I will illustrate this, uh, these uh, points with uh, work done by my lab. And this is uh, my dream team. And uh, we are studying dispersal by seeds. And Talav Gaur was with us, did his master on, on uh, movement of ants. And O, and uh, Ophir uh, uh, studied the foraging of, uh, of uh, these uh, bulbuls and grakers and dispersing uh, a desert uh, plant. Uh, uh, Neil Sapir is also here, did his PhD on migration of, uh, of uh, bee eaters in collaboration with Martin. Uh, we have a project that uh, Roe uh, 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 was supposed to, uh, in, uh, to uh, talk about yesterday and I replaced him and all did is for his uh, PhD on vultures. A uh, project on, on cranes and the project on storks. The Chai is also here and he presented his work. Martin also mentioned this. This is Sandra. Uh, we work on stone coolers and studying navigation of stone coolers. This is Yotam and Ama, uh, a, a study of, of, uh, of jackdaws that I will mention uh, uh, briefly by Anael and Ron, and study of barn owls, BioAv, a study of food bats. And, uh, and this is Toto and David and Alejandro and, uh, and some theoretical work of, uh, of Luba and Nirovitz and Hezi is also uh, with us. So uh, uh, we are covering quite a broad array of, uh, of uh, project and, uh, and I, will, uh, I will highlight uh, some of them uh, in the, in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, presentation of these of these uh, talks, and uh, we start with this uh, work that published uh, this week in Ecology Letter Letters, and uh, and it's that that the masters uh, uh, project of Neil Orovitz closely work with Neil, Neil Sapir, and you see our colleagues Felix Lichti, Ronia Avisar, and and Itzhak Marer, who uh, contributed to the to the data and to the atmospheric uh, uh, modeling. So this is the stereotypic uh, type of, of, uh, of uh, uh, sewing, gliding. And we asked the, the question, what determines the gliding speed, uh, denoted as V, of uh, migrating birds? So if you look at the theory of uh, bird uh, aerodynamics, uh, you see that uh, uh, V should scale with body mass with wing loading and with other morphometrics. And also from glide power calculation, we have these two uh, speeds, the VBG, best glide, maximize the time aloft, and the VOPT, maximize uh, uh, speed. 
So this is what theory tells us how birds should should uh, should uh, uh, fly, and if migrating uh, speed uh, uh, migrating birds maximize speed during migration, that's the general concept. They should fly in V-opt, and uh, so we uh, ask uh, Felix Lichti to use his data collected uh, more than 20 years ago in Israel. It's a radar uh, observation, plenty of data, high resolution, wonderful data set that already been uh, analyzed and, and, and this group uh, published very, uh, several nice papers. Uh, from this, we got uh, uh, this number of, of uh, sewing, gliding uh, 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 cycles. Uh, data is in one hertz and it's quite accurate, uh, less than 10 meters from uh, 12 different species. And uh, we also, in, because we need to, uh, to uh, quantify the winds in order to calculate the airspeed and also the turbulent uh, kinetic e energy as a measure of, of thermal intensity, we use this uh, 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 regional atmospheric model called RAMS. And when we, we visit this uh, basic theoretical expectation of, of uh, bird aerodynamics theory, we found no relationship with body mass, not even close, no relationship with wing loading, and nothing else with other aspect ratio and other uh, uh, measure that, that we uh, quantify for these species. Also, we uh, did not find any support for this claim that birds should fly at V-opt or even at VBG. Actually, this is the 12 different species and uh, this is VBG and this is VOPT. VBG is the, uh, uh, the slower and this is the faster. And you can see the theoretical expectation spanning for, for different species from bee eaters to uh, black, uh, what is that, black, uh, sp uh, black stalks. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, we don't have a tendency for either VOPT or VBG, but we actually have convergence of gliding speed in much narrower zone than what is expected by, by, by theory. So what explained this very fundamental, uh, uh, I would say deficiency of, of the basic uh, theory? What we uh, propose is uh, that, that birds fly in a risk sensitive matter, manner. And it is illustrated here. These two birds now climb a thermal and start from the same, the same position. The blue bird is flying close to VBG, flying slower with a shallower angle. And the red bird is flying closer to VOPT and is flying in a steeper angle but faster. So uh, the, the, the uh, blue bird is maximizing the time off but progress more slowly while the, uh, the uh, red bird is flying faster, but, but at greater risk of grounding or switching to flapping flight, which is much more costly. So it is a matter of choosing somewhere between those two extreme strategies in, in relation to your uh, uh, morphology and in, in relation to the uh, conditions. And, uh, and then in order to to quantify this effect, we introduced the risk aversion flight index, RAFI. And this is the uh, uh, VOPT ma maximum, the uh, airspeed, the measure airspeed, the observed airspeed of the bird, divided by the, the, the uh, span of this, of this VOPT minus VBG uh, 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 um, range. So uh, uh, this is, th these are the, uh, um, the relative values and a risk one bird uh, is, is flying at V-opt. This is the, the red bird, uh, bird here and Rafi will be zero. And uh, a risk averse bird will fly at VBG and Rafi will be one. So we can quantify that for, for all these uh, uh, 1300, uh, 1300 uh, birds and, uh, and uh, what you see here is how beautifully wing loading explains variance in Rafi. 
So Gil, you see this uh, R square of 96, you get sometimes also in this kind of, 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 of studies. And, uh, and uh, so what we see here is that a risk, uh, 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 birds do fly in a risk sensitive uh, matter, uh, manner, high wing loading is, uh, it, it, you know that, that it is unlikely that you catch up uh, uh, strong thermals. Whereas when you have low wing loading, you can take risk because with, with low wing loading, it is easier to, to catch uh, uh, thermals and that can be uh, less strong. So you are more willing to take risk here and to avoid risk in, in this case. What we also found within species is that the uh, uh, theoretical, uh, the meteorological conditions uh, quantified by the turbulent kinetic energy, the thermal intensity is uh, uh, negatively associated with RAFI, which means that uh, uh, when you, uh, conditions are good, you, need to t you can take risk. And when condi the thermal conditions are not so good, try to avoid uh, taking risk. And, uh, and, uh, and again, we found that with, uh, when the altitude of, of the start of gliding, when you start the gliding from a high position, take risk. When you start from a low position, avoid risk. So uh, uh, these uh, uh, results uh, together uh, uh, come up with a framework that offers evolutionary and ecological effects of of gliding speed. So the main effect in evolution, the selection is, is mostly a variation among species, is the wing loading, is the wing area and, and the body mass. And this vary uh, uh, primarily among, among species. And this is what you have, you can also, uh, um, uh, through behavioral changes, you can also uh, uh, contract uh, the winds or, or spread them. And, uh, and then you need to consider the, the thermal conditions. And if you have a uh, low uh, uh, wing loading, then you are more willing to, to take uh, uh, more risk. And, and with this framework, with two parameters, we can uh, actually explain the uh, uh, problems we had with, uh, with the basic uh, theory. So unlike gliders that have fixed winds and cannot do much, birds behave and they behave in a risk sensitive manner. And, uh, and uh, this is an example of, of, of our duty to examine basic theory and, and try to uh, uh, offer alternative uh, explanations. Uh, the next uh, uh, point that I would like to make is the importance of regional tracking at a scale of, of 10 kilometers. And, uh, and uh, uh, many of us work at a global scale and it is important, but uh, uh, I would say that for most ecological studies and problems, uh, 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 we uh, need also to concentrate on, on smaller scale of say 10 by 10 kilometers. So just to get, maybe this, this audience is biased, but just to, to uh, I, I would like to ask, uh, how many of, of you work only on, on global scale? Can you raise your hand? Only on global scale. How many of you work also on global scale? Okay, about 20 or so. How many of you work on, on that kind of scale, 10 kilometers? Okay, so it's a bit more, but if I would say that, uh, oh, what is that? Okay. <laughs> if I would say that we can have a system, a dream ideal system, I'm not saying that we are going to have all these properties, but I just want to to uh, define some, some high uh, expectations. If we say that we have a system that we can track many, say 1,000 small 50 grams animals, automatically and simultaneously at high spatial accuracy, meaning at GPS level, 
and frequent sampling, meaning one hertz for long duration, months to years, using much cheaper tag, say 50 to 100 percent. How many of you would like to use this system? <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, there's a need for this uh, uh, kind of, 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 uh, of uh, features, and we, are, uh, we have launched a, a project called Atlas. That was uh, really, uh, we forced ourselves to, to find how we put this nice atlas. So we, <laughs> we came up with advanced tracking and localization of animals in real life system. And uh, it is a project of the Minerva Center for Movement Ecology, collaboration among computer uh, sciences and electrical engineers and a, uh, a very strong group in Tel Aviv. Uh, with uh, our group in uh, Jerusalem and people from Haifa uh, University. And, uh, and uh, what uh, uh, we establish, uh, we are now in the process of establishing this, uh, this framework in uh, Hula Valley in North Israel, which is a hotspot of biodiversity in, in our region and migration and, uh, and very nice uh, place that you can, you can see here. And uh, um, it is based on principles of time differential uh, of arrival that already introduced by uh, uh, Rob McCurdy from, from uh, Cornell. And so we implement this, uh, these uh, principles and, and establish wh whatever is needed to track animals in this, in this region. Uh, it's like uh, uh, GPS principles, you have the, uh, 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 a target and, and the target is sending a signal and the signal is re received by different uh, 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 towers. It's like satellites in, in GPS and the difference in the, in the time, uh, from, from the difference in the time of arrival, you can calculate the, uh, uh, the location and get quite accurate uh, result. This is the, the, the area that the four uh, uh, um, towers that we already have uh, can cover. Uh, it's, I think, about five kilometers from here to here. And, uh, and this is the Hula Valley. Uh, this is the nature reserve. And this is the uh, reflooded area in the Agamon. And, uh, and uh, um, uh, the base stations are on this tower and, and others in, uh, in the area, they really need to be quite high. We realized that while, while developing uh, this system. Uh, we thought that we are going to use some uh, tags of uh, commercially available, but eventually uh, uh, that was not working well. So uh, our, the, uh, Sivan Toledo who was leading this project, uh, uh, designed the tag himself, and this is the first uh, bunch of, uh, of tags that, that uh, we had. Uh, two days ago, we launched the first uh, tracking of a barn owl, as you can see here, and, uh, and I'm eager to show you the results, but they are not ready yet. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, uh, probably uh, 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 we'll have to uh, resolve uh, many, many problems that, uh, that are typical to a system in such early stages, but hopefully uh, uh, we will uh, be able to track uh, many individuals in high resolution, in, in high accuracy, and, uh, and address questions of interactions between uh, species of uh, predator prey interactions of uh, of collective movements and uh, and many basic questions that of of ecological systems that that are relevant to a scale of about five by five kilometers or even more it depends on the number of of uh, base station that you put the more the better for example we thought that four will be enough but now we know that that for, for this area or a bit larger, we need actually much more because uh, if one of the base stations is not receiving the signal, then the, the localization is, is, is significantly uh, uh, worse. So uh, this is uh, coming uh, out. And the uh, last uh, two points that I would like uh, to mention, do I have more time or? Okay. All right. 
So uh, uh, this is our study of, of food bats and uh, study PhD of, of Asaf Tzor. And uh, you see here Asaf Tzor is taking a bat from, from the net. And, uh, and, and what I would like to emphasize here is the big eyes of this beautiful uh, uh, bat. And, uh, and uh, so we put uh, a very small uh, uh, transmitters of, uh, of uh, TechnoSmart Gypsy. And, uh, and that's uh, um, about more than 5% in, in some of the cases. And, uh, and female bats carry the young and fly with them that can weigh about half of the body mass. So uh, they, they, they can carry for, this is for about uh, uh, one week or two weeks, they, they carry the, the tag until it falls. And, uh, and that's fine. And then you need to find the tag in weird places. And, uh, and then you get the data, and I show you the movie in the first, in the first part of my talk. And uh, this is the cave, and this is this, those favorite trees of, of the bats that, uh, that uh, we tracked. So we wanted to understand how they navigate so well to, this, uh, to these uh, trees and, and their capacity for true navigation. So we uh, translocate them to the desert area well beyond the, the, the uh, foraging range. And the first two bats uh, where the experimental setup was to release uh, uh, half of them early at night with no feeding, with the expectation that they will go to this beloved tree as this one did. This is the first bat that we, that we tracked. And the next day is flying this very strong, fly, a very straight flight to the same uh, tree. And then we release the next uh, 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 experimental uh, group late at night after feeding with the expectation they will go to the cave as this one did. And, and then the next night it was flying to its own uh, favorite tree. And that's what uh, we found out. 505 really uh, 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 flew to the, to the tree and 405 uh, to the cave. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of something quite exceptional that, that also tells you the strength of this data. The bat is released here in the desert near Beersheba, and you see that immediately upon release it flies uh, northward and not as straight and, and high as the, as the uh, typical foraging, but here you see it, it's approaching the, the, the cave here, and I would say this is a decision point here. Above Galon, he said, okay, I have more time. I'm going to check what is going on in my favorite tree. Probably not for feeding, He's spending here only, only six minutes, flying about 12 kilometers to this place. Maybe to see who's around. Maybe that's the important thing of having a, a, a very specific tree and then flying back almost the same way to the cave about 15 kilometers. So uh, it just shows you the strength of using the data in order to get a very intimate view of what these animals are, are, are doing. So uh, what we uh, did in order to try to sort out what, what are the underlying mechanisms, maybe olfaction, maybe magnetic, maybe uh, visual uh, landmarks, uh, we took them away. And, and they do have uh, some common uh, uh, visual landmarks from the home range and this uh, release point, but not from this place, which is the, uh, a big erosion crater in the middle of the Negev desert. And so from the bottom of the crater, you can see nothing. And you can see only the, the walls and, and at night, you, you, you don't see anything. And, uh, and what we I, uh, did is to release part of the, of, the, of the bats here at the bottom and part from, from the top. This is further away. It's 84 kilometers, but you still can see uh, some visual landmarks. It's only a few kilometers between these two points. And this is what, what the bats did. Those released in the crater were, were lost, and they're moving around until all of them actually, after covering about 40 kilometers of, of wandering within the uh, the crater, they, they left in the right uh, direction, whereas those released just, just nearby flew in a very straight line northward. 
and uh, and that uh, uh, was pre was uh, presented as the first evidence for large large scale navigational map in a, in a memo. And my last example, which I'll go very, very quickly, is uh, about this Jecto. This is a new project in our group. And uh, we ask uh, uh, how the social rank uh, is affecting the coordinated uh, flight. We use stereoscopy uh, to, uh, to uh, quantify. And you can see here a flock of Jectos coming out from this tree. They are flying together. And, uh, and it is taken by two uh, cameras. Ooh. And uh, I'm sorry, it's not coming uh, out very uh, f fluently. But um, then you can uh, identify a specific uh, uh, birds and track them and uh, get. Uh, and get uh, uh, the track from, from the two cameras and, and do the calculation to uh, sort out the, the, uh, the three-dimensional <laughs> three path and then ask, do they subgroup? So it's very obvious that they fly in one group. I'm sorry for that. But, but the question is whether they, they fly in, in subgroup. And, and that's a challenge, how to construct the null model of identifying subgroup within a very coordinated group. Uh, and the reason is that uh, uh, they have strong linear hierarchy uh, that is structured by pairs. And, and we do see uh, a signature for pairs flying together in flocks of, of jackdaws. And, and, and that's OK. So I'm, I'm summing up. Uh, 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 I would say uh, we need to keep on pushing the technological limits. Always remember the main goals and the big questions. And uh, uh, theory indeed lags behind, uh, behind uh, tools, but this is not necessarily bad. As I've tried to show you, it's time to revise the theory and make it less dogmatic and more integrative and tighten the links with empirical studies and data. Every single project, I think, now finds some inconsistency and, and uh, patterns that are different from, from uh, 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 some of the basic uh, expectation we have from, from theory. And uh, I would say um, uh, young people should drive this, uh, this field forward and uh, uh, together with a more experienced one. And we all need to uh, learn. We need to integrate different uh, studies of movement and ask for to syn uh, synergy, share tools, data, concepts, and ideas. I think be published in movement ecology and enjoy life. And thank you. Yeah, I, 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 that's that's my emphasis. I always think about about these these uh, big uh, uh, questions. And when you track those talks and have ten million data points, like Shai uh, showed in his lecture, think about what drives survival of juveniles, for example, and how your excellent movement data can explain the difference in survival between juveniles and adults. And uh, look at reproductive success and try, and, and therefore you need a lifetime track, and try to explain how movement through carryover effects and through other uh, 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 things that you can extract from the movement affect uh, with reproductive success. So I, I'm, I'm even saying a, a stronger argument. I think that more study, the vast majority of studies, should consider fitness in, in movement ecology. Uh, thank you very much, Ron.